Welcome everyone to today's tutorial where we're going to be looking at platform games. Now what I've got set up so far and what you're going to be doing for me for the first 10 minutes or so is you can see that on the left hand side I've already created a new file and I've called it platform game. We've created two sprites that we're going to be starting with which is uh, SPR underscore player underscore running underscore R. That sounds like a really really long and convoluted name but it's going to make a lot more sense later on. All I've done for that sprite is just used the file and new options. So I've just done file and new sprite as I've done before and just colored that in uh, a whole block color of red. I've done exactly the same for our platform game. I've created two basic objects to marry up to those of obj underscore player and I've got obj underscore platform and I've created a new level, just called it level one. If you guys want to go and do the same, thank you. Okay, so we should now be in the position that we've got on screen at the minute where we've got our two sprites, we've got our two objects, and we've now got our first level. So first things first, our level needs to be an awful lot longer than it currently is. So I've got level one open, notice I've got level with a capital L. What I'm going to be doing here is to ex extend, expand the size of the level so it's quite a bit wider. So I'm going to go to the settings tab and I'm going to be changing the width from 640, which it currently is, to 2000. Just like we did in the platform game, this is an entirely arbitrary number. I've just picked 2000 because that should give us enough to work with. You can find that you can still again use middle mouse to pan to the side so you can still see the entirety of your level. What we're going to do first is start by building the fundamental basics. We're going to start by placing our player in the room, giving it gravity, making it able to move and then to jump. But obviously before we do that we need to place our platform in the room. So I've gone to our objects tab, Again, I'm on my level here, I'm on level one, I've gone to my objects tab, and I've got object platform, and I can place that on screen. Now, because they're 32 by 32, this is going to take me an awfully long time. Or you can hold down shift on your keyboard, which lets you paint them. If you accidentally paint somewhere in the incorrect way, you can right click and delete them, or you can press control on your keyboard and right click, and that will just let you delete them. For testing, I'm just going to place a few working up on my level, seemingly kind of at random. I'm just painting these in. What I do now need is my player. My player is going to start life there and we're going to have our player simply fall to the ground. So all I've done so far, my player object contains no events and my platform event, my platform object contains no events. There is one thing I want you to do at this stage, which is your platform object. I want you to have that become solid just by clicking this icon here. What solid does is it gives you a particular type of collision detection. Similar to what we did in the platform, um, in the shooter game, the space shooter game, uh, we need collisions to detect and to do certain things. Solid is really important because it triggers a particular kind of collision detection that stops things falling through them, which is important later on. So platform needs solid digging. What I now want to do here is on my player, I want to give player some instructions. The first thing we're going to say is when I am created, so add a new event on create, when I am created, gravity is going to pull us down. So a bit of code, just as before. I want gravity to pull me down. Just so happens there's a predefined uh, variable in there called gravity. Gravity here refers to the force of gravity. How strong is it? This is a number that you can play with, but I find that 0 0.8 works quite well. The other piece of information we need to give gravity is which way is gravity facing? Gravity underscore direction is the instruction for this. This allows us to change which way gravity is facing. And as you remember from uh, the lessons earlier on, 270 is down. You can set that to different values and you have really good fun playing with this. But ultimately, we want gravity to pull us down at the moment. This is currently all our player knows, which is on create, gravity will pull us down with a force. So let's see what that does when we run the game. It'll do a quick antivirus scan, or mine does because it's an executable file, which uh, could potentially contain viruses. And there's my platform, there's my character falling to the abyss. We haven't given any instructions beyond just fall down, so we're going to need to change that. The other instructions we're going to add to our player at the moment are add a new event. On collision with our platform, we need it to do something. Again, this is really important if you haven't done, object platform must be solid for this to work, that little tick box there. So our object player, when it collides with our platform, we're going to have a bit of code. The first bit of code that we need is to modify our speed. Now, unlike before when we did speed and speed controlled 
a number of things. For platform games, it's broken into two separate parts, which is H-speed for horizontal speed and V-speed for vertical speed. Because we are falling, because we're going up and down, that's going to be vertical. Now, rather than typing out vertical speed, it's abbreviated just to V-speed. You'll notice this is all one word, no spaces, no underscores, vertical speed. It says at the bottom here, assignment operator expected. Just like I said in the previous week, when we've got our equal sign, that means becomes or is assigned. A ways of reading the equal sign. So whenever you get that message, assignment operator expected, it's looking for an equal sign. So V speed equals. Now, because I want to stop, I want that to be zero. So you know what I'm like. I like testing. I'm going to play that, and I expect to stop when I touch the surface, which I do. That's all we can currently do within this game. What I now want to do at this point is set up the left and right instruction. So when I key press right, I'm going to move right. Now we know that V speed is for vertical speed, so H speed is going to be for going horizontally. Key thing to note here is when I'm going right, I need to be traveling in a positive number. So 10, positive 10 works. I can, if I want to, put plus 10, because if I wanted to go left, it would be minus 10. But 10 works just fine, because positive 10, we don't normally bother putting the plus symbol in. So H speed equals 10. Just as we've done before, I want to also add a key release. So when I release the right key, my H speed is going to equal zero. Now I tend to put spaces in between those just to find it easy to read. You don't need to, doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna do the same thing here when I key press left. We're gonna go left, H speed, you guessed it, equals minus 10. Again, I just like putting my spaces in. So H speed equals minus 10. And then last but by no means least, key release left, H speed equals zero. Let's test it, let's see what that does. So we should now expect that when I press left and right on my keyboard, my character moves left and right. And when I release the left and right key, we're gonna stop uh, traveling left and right, which is what I'm doing. What I can see at the minute is if I try to fall through the gap, I can fall into the abyss. Gravity pulls me when I'm no longer touching the platform. The next instruction is going to be jumping, and this is gonna be quite a big one. So I'm now gonna add a new key press, and I press space. So when I press space, we're going to jump up, and I'm going to do this in a series of steps to explain how easy it is to make Flappy Bird. So when I press space, I know that my vertical speed needs to change, my V speed. Again, like we've covered, because the top row of our screen starts on coordinate zero, the very, very top row there, and I know that as it goes down, the numbers get bigger. So it's zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, it carries on all the way down to the bottom. So if I want to go up, I need to take away from where I currently am. So my V speed needs to become a minus number. Now, again, I'm just typing 10 for all of these values. You can try different numbers and see what they do, but I need this to be a minus value, minus 10, plus 10, but just try and force you into the platform as you try to push down. So I'm now pressing space on my keyboard and I can carry on doing that. Look, we've made Flappy Bird, and I think this was less than four minutes. How much money did he make from that? Okay, so you can see that we're just pressing space and we are jumping on screen. The next thing that we want to do, though, is to make it so we can only jump when we're actually in contact with the floor. This is going to involve an if statement, and we need to check, am I currently colliding with something? So I'm going to press enter to drop that down a few lines, and this is where our if statements come in. If, just as before, I've opened and closed regular brackets, place underscore meeting. This is an instruction that means, is a collision currently happening? Just as before, I want to then open regular brackets and say, find out where I am. If place meeting on my X and my Y, and then the object that we're checking for collision with. Now we're obviously looking, are we colliding with the platform? And I'm gonna open some squigglies and I'm gonna open a closed squiggly. There is a problem here that I would like to show you. So that's in there, we'll pop comments in in a second. I just wanna show you the issue this may cause. So I'm pressing space and nothing's happening. I can't jump. And that is because right now where my player is, there is no collision. It's almost touching, but not quite. There is no collision. So what we need to do is to go back to our piece of code when I press space, if place meeting, on my X, so where I am, left and right, and then on my Y, we're gonna change this here. I still wanna say on my Y, but add one. Look one pixel down from where I am, and is there a collision there? Let's see what that does. So now it's looking for just underneath where the pixel is, just underneath, just that row there, 
and then when I press space, that's triggering a collision. I'm now tapping space, but I can only jump when I'm in contact with the floor. So that's working really well. Let's put some comments in. So when I press space, check for collision, Again, bonuses for misspellings underneath, underneath, uh, underneath the player, and then that's performing that check, and then V speed. Move up at a speed of ten. Now, what you'll notice is that V speed and H speed are very powerful. Let me show you what this does that you do that you might not notice. Is when I'm travelling right and I jump, I jump in a nice smooth arc, and then when I let go of it. I carry on going whichever direction that I am facing, or whichever way I'm pointing. This gives us a lot of control and it gives you a really, really nice effect. There's a few other things that we want to do while we're here, which is um, fix the problem with our camera. Currently our view is quite limited. Currently our view is of the entire world, and that's not something that we really want to see. We just want to see the bit focused primarily around the player. So what I'm going to do here is press OK to minimize that down, Open back up our room, which is currently open on my screen, and I want to go to Views. Read Views as Camera, so Views, which are at the top there. I want to create a new camera that only looks at where the player is. So I want to enable the use of Views, and I want to make it visible when room starts. Now, notice that I've now got this box that has uh, it's appeared. If I turn that off, you can see it disappears and then reappears. What this means is this camera can only see this much. What we then have at the bottom is an Object Following tab. This means which, which object do we want to follow? Well, we want to follow object player. These values here, the 32 and the 32, the HBOR and the VBOR, what they refer to is how close to the edge does the character have to get before it'll start, uh, the camera will start following it. If we want it to be like Mario, where Mario always stays in the centre of the screen, we don't want that to be 32 and 32. We want it to be half of our screen. So if it's six, uh, 640 and 480, we know that that's going to be 320, and that's going to be 400, oh, sorry, 240. That means that as soon as my player moves into the centre of the screen, the screen will follow my player along. And let's see what that does. As I move, there we go. It's now moving into the centre, and we're going from there. Because I've designed my game in such a way, you can't actually get up to that platform. You can happily fall through though. Because the game is still playing currently at the moment, then my character is falling, but if I tap right or left on my keyboard, because he's still falling, my, the camera's still trying to follow it. So we've got a few things that we're going to need to polish here, and we're going to polish that over time. The bug that you probably have clocked onto at the moment is, well, my player can leave the screen down the bottom, as we've just seen, but he can also leave the screen by going off screen to the left. This is not good. All we're going to do to fix that for the time being is object player, add event, other, and then when you intersect the boundary, just like we did with the space shooter with space invaders, what we're going to say here is when I have intersected that boundary, bit of code, horizontal speed equals zero. This is still going to introduce the same problem that we had before, which is that as we touch the edge of the screen, it's going to stop our player, but I can still tap left to move through. Perhaps not, so that's even better. We can't actually leave the screen. The other problem that we're going to have, though, is if I intersect the boundary at the top of the screen, it will make our H speed equal zero, which could, it behaves almost like tar at that point, becomes very, very sticky, which may not be ideal for what you want. Um, the alternative for what we're doing at the moment is you could place a series of blocks down on the left hand side there, and just like we've dealt with platform, we've made it solid. You can also turn things invisible by de-ticking the visible tab there. It will still appear in your viewport and it will still behave as it's supposed to. But now my platforms are invisible. You could imagine using this technique for, to form a series of invisible blocks down there. When you collide with those blocks, your hit speed equals zero. We're not going to do that, but you could see that would be very, very easy to do. One thing I am going to do before we move on to the next bit is to go to our object player. Because the player currently can't jump onto the platform, we're going to change that. So I'm going to have it say, when I press space, currently jumping up at a V speed of minus 10, I'm going to try a V speed of minus 20. Is that enough to get me onto that next platform? So if I press space, more than enough. I think 15 might be the best bet. Again, trial and error just to find what works for you. When I press space, minus 15. 
You could also limit the strength of gravity. That seems to be more than enough. So we're going to keep that at minus 15. And you see what I meant about becoming sticky at the top of the screen there. So as it touches the very top, it can't move left or right. So you need to be a bit careful with your level design if you are going to use this technique, or you could use those blocks as we mentioned earlier. Okay.